Guys, Wages World coming at you with another video. Um, listen, guys, uh, today's the 21st of August 2021. We've had a lot of eruptions on the sun today, and um, we're going to talk about that plus all the other stuff. But I want to say thanks to everybody that went over to the Tommy Scoville show. Um, guys, you guys floor me every time. You guys are so awesome. Um, it's an addiction recovery channel, and I stand behind everything he's talking about over there. And so I, you know, I put it out there. If we get 500 from the channel over there, I'll eat a can of Sistrami. That's basically nasty herring in a can. Okay. If we can get a thousand from, from the Wages World family to go over there and give a subscription, I'll even throw in some durian fruit and blend it up, put it in a beer hat and drink it. So if you want to see old uh, Mr. Wages World over here do something really stupid, plus get the benefit of a great addiction recovery channel, fresh look at all that stuff, I mean, you got to go over and check it out. So I do appreciate everybody that's been over there so far, and um, hopefully more people will get over there and because and, I really do strongly believe in it. I'm behind it 100%. So with that being said, we'll step into the space weather stuff here. Now listen, guys, um, the, the Schumann here is not, you know, doing a whole lot. So I'm not going to waste too much time here. A few little upticks, but nothing really much to talk about there, guys. I mean, honestly. Now, with the, the space weather, we're going to talk about the eruptions on the sun, which is what you're seeing right here. X-ray production's up because we're having more active areas facing Earth. And we'll talk more about that here in a second. But these are the flares and the eruptions happening where you see the spikes, right? Um, protons, we're talking that that would be basically radiation storms and things like that. Nothing going on there. Geomagnetic activity is hanging pretty much normal. Not much going on right now. But I think that's probably going to change in the next few days. At least a little bit. And we'll go more into that. This is uh, NOAA, NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center. And this is their forecasting. Right? So the KP number here is what this is representing. is not going to get over the 3. Right? So that means not even close to a low level storm. So nothing within the next few days. But we'll keep an eye on it. Right? Now, this is the first look at your sun. This is a um, coronal hole. And the Earth right now, this time of year, is kind of hanging about right here as far as equatorial towards the sun. Um, so we are going to connect to that. It's going to give us some uh, uptick in solar wind. Here's those active areas right here on the sun. That And these have been erupting. This one here erupted pretty big yesterday. Um, and we'll talk about that more here in a minute. But, yeah. So... With the Discover data, this is what this is right here. The BZ, negative six or bigger is what we look for. Okay, we're in the purple right there. That's what. That's when we got the negative six or bigger. Um, not much though. All the other conditions have to come in too, typically to give us a bump on geomagnetically, right? Phi angle, not doing much there. That's the polarity of the solar wind. Solar wind is charged gas or plasma. So that means it has a negative and a positive. That's why it can flip polarity. Whenever it does flip, sometimes we'll take a hit geomagnetically, right? Now the density, 4 is normal, right? At the high end of normal. Now I've seen it up over 100. So right now this isn't that big of a deal. I mean, honestly. Now the wind speed, it's actually kind of almost on the low side, guys. It got below 300 right there. 3 to 500 is what we would consider normal, kilometers per second. Um, if it gets much below that and it hangs out low like that, typically we got to start looking out for cosmic rays at that point, which is radiation. So we do need some geomagnetic activity to kind of fend off that kind of stuff. So we really got to pay attention to that, and, you know, and we are, and that's what we do, right? Okay, this is our uh, magnetopause. The sun's to the left, and this is the Earth. Things are going to go from left to right here. And what you're looking at here is the velocity, that, that kilometers per second wind speed I was just talking about, right? Um, right now, it's running really low, see? Because I already showed you guys on Discover. That's what this uh, key up here is telling us. So, typically, we'll see what looks to be more and more waves coming in when it's lower. And the reason why is, guys, it's just easier to see. Um, for whatever reason, that's how it works. Uh, but... Any kind of variance when it's slow shows up more is what I'm saying. That's why you see what looks to be waves coming in. And it is, but it's just not intense waves, okay? Density. And to explain, this is the density. You're only going to see like one wave here, 
right there. Okay, why? Well, because all this is showing you is density, not the wind speed. So that's that's more representative of what's actually real. Now, what you're seeing here, guys, is the darker colors is higher density, right? Why is it white back here? Well, because that's lower density and it's behind the protection of the Earth's magnetic field or magnetopause. That's why it's lower back here, okay? Now, most people will understand magnetic pressure or pressure period. That's what you're looking at there, right? And there ain't much going on. You'll see that one wave come in, see? Boom, and that's it. That's all you're going to see. Now, we do have kind of a buffer right now around our planet. You can see definitely where the pressure isn't actually getting down real far. Now, that isn't always that way. If we take a big hit or whatever, we've seen this turn solid red, you know? We've all seen that. Anybody that's been around for a minute. Okay, the aurora models, guys. Um, yeah, when we get geomagnetic activity, we'll see an uptick in aurora. North pole here on the left, south pole on the right. You definitely see a little uptick there and back down to nothing. Okay, that's very representative of what I just showed you here. Okay, so <laughs> it's all confirming itself, right? Now, this is geoelectric field model. This is space weather's effect on our electrical grid or unnatural components. And as I roll through this, you're going to see not much is going on, okay? So right now, everything's pretty quiet around our planet. Now we'll go over here to ISWA, and what I'm going to show you here is the sun. So let me zoom in here a little bit, and we'll get it going here. This is SDO. This is the one that, that sits out in front of the Earth in geosynchronistic orbit, and it's always looking at the sun, right? Um, you can definitely see the active areas. No question. Let me uh, go ahead and run the update on that so we can get the most updated uh, captures here. But this down here really blew a big one yesterday. Um, but this is where all the stuff's coming from. And um, so with that being said, let me pause that real quick. And I will uh, just do it this way. Roll that back. And you're going to see it move and, and all those things. But you're going to see small little eruptions and stuff happening all over this okay but nothing's coming to earth right now at least that i know of now you're going to see let's see here i know there's one up top right here in just a second unless it's already happened yeah it already happened but again what we got to pay attention to are these two typically okay right now because the sun's it, it rotates clockwise or counterclockwise, I'm sorry. <laughs> Duh. Uh, from left to right. How about that? But these are going to be uh, becoming earth-facing. And, and if they start blowing like this one did yesterday, oh man, um, we could be seeing some issues here in the next week or so. So, yeah. Okay, this is over at Seeds. This is the SOHO satellite. And it's about a million miles closer to the sun than what we are. And it's always looking at the sun. Remember, this, this disc is actually has to be there to block out the main part of the light of the sun so we can even get a capture at all. But you can definitely see all these eruptions, okay? There's multiple ones, and there was one bigger one. You know, it had like a medium-sized one, I would call it, and then you had the, the biggest one there. You'll see it here in just a second. Medium, big, okay? But all those went off the backside, or at least off not Earth-directed. How can I say that? Well, let me show you. Let's uh, go over here to Stereo A. Oops, sorry about that, guys. Stereo A right here. Okay, so this is basically kind of a partial side view of the sun. Satellite would be here. Earth would be over here, right? So when it's going to the left here, it's definitely not coming our direction. So that's, you know, that's good and bad all at the same time, but, you know, we, we need some, right? And um, we do have a little bright spot right here, which we're going to keep an eye on that. That may be a small little eruption that I haven't seen yet. But we'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on that, guys. Okay, guys. Space Weather Prediction Center. Um, not Prediction Center. I'm sorry. Spaceweather.com. They do a great job, guys. Go give them some love. I, you know, they're really full of a lot of good information over here. Um, they're actually talking about that CME I just talk, showed you guys. They're saying it went off the far side also. So, yeah. And you're, you're seeing it here on Lasco uh, C3, which is from the SOHO Observatory satellite. Out, the one I already showed you guys. It's always looking at the sun. 
So, and also the act of sunspots turn towards Earth. They're basically they're saying the same thing I just said. I think. Yep. Because there was a C3 class, a C1 class flare. So stuff's happening from those sunspots getting ready to face Earth. So if that keeps up, we'll really just have to keep an eye on it. Now, um, we'll go down here to the noctilucent clouds. As we get closer and closer to fall, the fall equinox, these are going to go away. I've said that you know, a bunch. They happen in the summertime in each hemisphere. What is it? It's water vapor that freezes around meteor dust. And we've seen a, a, a pretty decent size uh, intensification as far as the density of what we were seeing when we went through the Perseid meteor shower. Because it was, you know, those fireballs were coming in and in our atmosphere it was sucking them to the poles. That get, The dust that, that gets uh, expelled when they blow up or burn up. So when water vapor freezes around that stuff, around our poles or wherever it's at, high up in our atmosphere, that makes these blue metallic looking clouds. So it's a good indication of what, you know, we're seeing temperature difference and stuff like that. So that's why we even pay attention to this. Plus, it's, they're cool looking clouds. <laughs> now, oh, I forgot one thing here, guys. Near Earth objects. We'll go down here and check it out real quick. Not much to show, though. Okay, guys, this is lunar distance. They keep track of how many near-Earth objects there are that they can see and find. And what you're going to find is you're going to see a lot of 2020, 2021 because they always put the date when they first see them, when they name them, typically. And, um, you know, like I said, guys, we're right about here in time, 2021st of August. Anything past that, you're not going to see a whole lot of 2021, but you will act before that. So <laughs> uh, that kind of, you know, confirms what I just said. Now, velocity, kilometers per second, that's how fast it's moving. Um, that one there is moving pretty quick, 26.2. That's also a big one. That's a 655 diameters. Meters, uh, meters in diameter, duh. Um, yeah, so that's a pretty decent size one, guys. Uh, but it's, it's, what, what's it say here? 8.9 liter distance. It's almost nine times the distance between us and the moon away from us. So, that's what we're talking about as far as distance there. Now, earthquakes, this has kind of been the big story lately, guys. Um, it's a really good indication of what's going on. Um, we have some unrest. I mean, let's just face it. This is what it is. These bigger ones down here are, are now starting to slow down. After we had the, the 7, 9, and the 8, 1 down there, and some 6s, we had, my gosh, I don't even know how, I, I didn't even count them. A bunches and bunches of 4.5 or bigger earth, uh, aftershocks down here. Okay, and they all stayed along this uh, this uh, plate boundary line for the most part. Now, we also had some bigger ones throughout, right? We had, I think we had like five or six, seven point or bigger earthquakes in a week. And plus the most devastating one, guys, this is horrible. Over here in Haiti, it's pushing close to 3,000 people dead at this point, I think. Um, it's just really bad. I hate even talking about that stuff, but I did want to mention it. Um, so yeah, there's your space weather update guys. Um, again, guys, please, uh, thank you for going over and subscribing to Tommy's channel, Tommy Scoville show. If you know anybody that's struggling with the, with addiction or yourself, you know, it's a good place over there. I have a really, very, very strong family support system. That's why I've been able to stay sober so long. The medication helps. Yes. But that, the mental part of it's almost the hardest thing to, to really deal with. And if, if my family wasn't so great, you know, I would have probably fell off the wagon a long time ago. Um, let's just face it. You know, I'm just being honest with you. Uh, you know, so if you don't have, ac you know, access to a good family support system, go check out the channel. Because people in the comment sections are already taking that role with each other. Or you can email me. If Tommy himself doesn't, like, you know, answer back because he's starting to get a bunch of comments, somebody in there is. So it's already turning into a big family, which I knew it would, especially with the people that came from his brother's channel at Chase the Heat and mine. Okay? Because we all, they're, they're, we're all we all close. You can tell. It's a very cool thing. So if you know anybody, please go over there. If you yourself are, are struggling with that, go check it out. Um, if you want to know more about that, go check it out over there. Um, and again, remember, 
you get those sub subscriber uh, numbers up over there, I'll be eating that nasty stuff for you guys. <laughs> you guys will probably get a good kick out of it, but you know, research shoestroming and and durian fruit, and you guys will know how uh, yeah how intense that stuff actually is. So, as always, God bless. Yahusha saves. You can drink this Kool-Aid.